I'm Diana Felzone, veteran Time Magazine contributor and author Richard Zoglin joins us in the Fox 401 studio to discuss his latest book, Hope, Entertainer of the Century, about the legendary Bob Hope. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be here. So what made you do a book about Bob Hope? What drove you to it? Well, Bob has kind of gone off the radar for many years. He was such a huge star in the most of the century, and I think uh, in the last few years, people have kind of forgotten about him. I did a book on stand-up comedy in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and I interviewed a lot of the comedians of that generation, George Carlin, Robert Klein, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, mm -hmm. and I would always ask them who, their, who they grew up listening to, who they were influenced by, and nobody mentioned Bob Hope. And it just made me sad because Bob Hope, I think, was really the inventor of stand-up comedy, the kind of stand-up right. comedy that we think of today. Right. And when we, we look at his career, you point out in your book that he was one of the most prolific entertainers in that he was vaudeville. He right. was a uh, comedy. He did movies. He did everything you could think of. Radio. Radio. Countless. I mean, he sang. This guy really yes. was a one-man band. There there was nobody who, who, who dominated in every single field of popular entertainment of the century right, like Bob Hope. Right, and I don't think we have an equivalent to this day of someone who is a Bob Hope. Do you think that in today's day and age with, let's say, the reality stars and even Ryan Seacrest, that B Bob Hope would have become the big star that he was now? Well, I, I think it's impossible to compare the eras. When Bob mm -hmm. was doing television shows, there were three networks, and, and Bob could do a show, and half of the co people in the country were watching him. Yeah. His 1970 special from Vietnam, his Christmas special, was the highest rated television show of all time up to that point. And it's still in the top five, That's believe incredible. it or not. Yeah. But those kind of audiences don't exist anymore. Now you're, you're fighting for smaller shares of the audience. To be a mass audience star the way Bob Hope was, I think is pretty difficult today. Yeah, probably would never happen because we're just so overwhelmed, I think, by media saturation. There's just yeah. too many places to go. And, and you mentioned about his, his holiday specials and everything that he's done in terms of the troops. And the USO and Bob Hope were synonymous. What, what really was um, the inspiration for Bob and his interest with the USO and the soldiers? It started in World War II when Hollywood really banded together it was a, you know, a tough time for the country. Mm -hmm. We got into war and everybody felt they had to do their bit. Some stars enlisted, others who didn't, uh, you, you know, wanted to do their part. And many of them went overseas to entertain the troops, sponsored by the USO, which was just created at right. the beginning of the war. And Bob was one of those stars, one of many, but he was the one who continued after the war. Mm -hmm. uh, starting in 1948, he started to make a little tradition of a Christmas trip to entertain the troops. And that continued uh, continuously almost until through the Vietnam War. And, you know, no one else became identified with the troops the way Bob Hope mm -hmm. did. And also just in general with doing charity work and just giving back as a celebrity, as a star. Right. Uh, Bob Hope really led the way in Hollywood, I believe. He was a very accessible public figure, but yet there was a lot that people didn't know about his private life. Uh, he was very careful about how he presented himself as a family man. He was married, as you pointed out, for 69 years yeah. to his wife, Dolores. Mm -hmm. But he was a womanizer. Well, he was. And yeah. this was, uh, he was. He was pretty blatant about it. It was kind of accepted back then. It was a different time. Uh, his, the, the, his entourage and the press mostly uh, looked away, hmm. and they accepted that this was not something you would talk about. He could, couldn't get away with this today, no. I think. But, you know, in Bob Hope's, to Bob Hope's credit, he never broke up his family. He did have a, a marriage that, uh, that lasted and I think was sincerely close, if you can say that, <laughs> uh, that a marriage <laughs> could be close under those circumstances. But, uh, you know, right. he did stay together with Dolores for 69 years. Right. And that, do you think, was more of a, a saying something about the time and just family values of yes. that time? Well, yeah, Dolores was a strict Catholic, and right. I think uh, divorce was out of the question for her. Mm -hmm. I think she... She knew she offered a lot to Bob. I mean, she, they were really a great team, mm -hmm. and she was a great support for him. She was a great reality check for him, and I, I think she enjoyed being Mrs. Bob Hope and the life that that gave her, it and uh, she made a decision early on that she would put up with whatever she had to put up with mm -hmm. and to remain Bob, Mrs. Bob Hope. Yeah, well, it's a lifestyle, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Bob had so many celebrity friends, but he also had frenemies like Johnny Carson, who... Mm -hmm was always having Bob Hope kind of pop in as those planned surprise guest appearances. Right. 
why why was Johnny Carson tired of Bob Hope? Well, Bob Hope was the one star at NBC who was really bigger than Johnny Carson, and <laughs> Bob could really throw his weight around. Whenever he had a special or anything he wanted to promote, he could pretty much book himself on The Tonight Show, <laughs> and Johnny, cool. Johnny could hardly say no. Yeah. And then, but I think Johnny started to resent this a little, and also, Bob came on the show and he had his writers, and his writers would write jokes for him, yeah. ad-lib jokes. And Johnny really didn't like that. Johnny liked to have conversations. He, he would have questions to ask, and I think they were pretty planned in advance, but, but still he liked a little spontaneity, mm -hmm. and he got none of that from Bob. So right. didn't, he didn't think Bob was really a good guest. Thank you so much for joining us okay. today. It was a great day. And for more on the life of Bob Hope, be sure to pick up Hope by Richard Zoglin and visit the site www.bobhopethebook.com.